Hey, how's it going? I'm Patrick Jaguer, the Cosmic Alchemist, and welcome to this video. So this video is all about the full moon of Monday, June 17th, 2019. The full moon exact will be about 4.30 in the a.m. on Monday, June 17th. So that's 4.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Eastern United States. So basically the... Um, the general themes of this full moon, I'll spit these out and we'll get more into them. The general themes, it's all about our reaction individually and collectively to basically the old belief systems coming down, the old belief systems that we've had for generations for the last 2,000 years. And the institutions too, these institutions are falling apart too. And most people are not going to like this. Most people, honestly, they're going to lose their shit as this happens. Um, and this is going to put a lot of events into motion here. You know, I think in six months in a year, you know, the world's going to, it's going to look different in a lot of ways. It's hard to imagine. It's always hard to imagine that things will ever be different, but it's coming. So anyway, what's up with full moons? So full moons are when our whole mind gets laid bare, our whole consciousness. So when I, when I mention the mind here, I'm not talking about just the intellect, you know, the calculator in your head that does math problems and sorts details. I'm talking about your emotions, your, your overall thinking, your reactions to things, your memories, even your past life memories, if you believe in past lives, I do. You know, it's your whole intangible self. Your whole consciousness. So, let's look at the sun for a minute here. So the sun is an analog to the soul. And what they have in common is that you can't, you can't look at either one directly. I mean, you can look directly at the sun, but it's going to fry your retinas. So functionally, you can't look directly at the sun. Well, you can't see a soul directly either. But you can see the moon. You can look directly at the moon all you want, and the moon reflects the light of the sun. Well, with human beings, you can observe somebody's mind directly. So someone's behavior, their thinking, their emotional process, you can observe that directly. So the person's mind is reflecting the light of their soul. So these things are analogs. You know, one happens at a smaller scale, one happens at a larger scale. So when the full moon comes, it reflects the light of our souls and the collective soul. You know, our individual and collective. So during a full moon, you're forced to deal with all the emotions and all the thoughts and everything that you can usually distract yourself from and run away from and sort of self-medicate yourself against. However you do that, there's a million ways to medicate yourself. So during a full moon, you have to deal with these things. And this is why, you know, when you look statistically, there's more violent crime, the police are busier, there are more emergency room visits because people's minds are just all stirred up and crazy things happen. So full moon's a big deal. And so with this full moon, there are even world events right now that I think this full moon are really making even more intense. You know, in my, in my June 2019 astrology forecast, I talked about how a potential 9-11 event will come about. Well, I think that's happening. You know, I think this whole Iran tanker thing is that event. And I think there are those who would use it as a pretext to go to war or to conduct some military action against Iran. So, you know, here it is. You know, because there was a whole thing where Mars was in Gemini and it was in the same nakshatra, so the same mini constellation as Mars is in during 9-11 and then Mars is out of bounds, it's off its declination, just like it was during 9-11, so. And there are things in astrology, too, that point to deceitfulness around these events. So, I think this whole, this whole media response and this U.S. government response to the, this tanker incident where these two tankers were attacked and, you know, what they would like to do with, with this event, what they would like to use it as justification for, it's a way to put the age of Pisces on life support. So for the last 2,000 years, we've been in the age of Pisces. All of our, our institutions and all of our belief systems come from the age of Pisces. 
you know, the Roman Empire started during the age of Pisces and really our Western society is a continuation of that. The major religions started during the age of Pisces. So Judaism took on its current form at the start of the age of Pisces when the Persians liberated them from the Babylonian captivity. Ancient, the whole, the Old Testament Judaism, that was a totally different thing. It was more like paganism. You know, they did animal sacrifices and all that stuff. And then, but the Persians had this one God religion, good versus evil. You're either right or wrong. You're either good or evil. You're with God or the devil. So as kind of a tribute to the Persians, the Jewish people adopted that and the whole religion changed. And then Christianity is the religion of the age of Pisces because the symbol, the zodiac symbol for Pisces is two fish. And so Jesus and his disciples are fishermen and they fed multitudes of people with fish. And he said, go be fishers of men. So religions are invented during each age of the zodiac and that's their heyday. And then Islam was started during the age of Pisces too. And I mean, and that, that's, that's a your way. I mean, that's a, a my way or the highway type of a religion. And they'll, they'll kill you for not following the rules just like the Christians would up to about, you know, the year 1700. So all of these things are on the way out. You know, the, these, these our way or the highway religions and even this two party politics where, you know, you join this club you back the club no matter what, right, wrong, or otherwise. And no matter what side any of us chooses, it's always the right side. It's always the correct side and the good side. And the other side is always the evil side, no matter what side you pick. And that's what everyone's doing, especially the Western world. You know, it's everyone's doing this. The whole world is doing this. They're very self-righteous. Pisces is, is full of self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is inherent in the age of Pisces, because everybody is always on the correct side, on the side of good, and the other side is always the side of evil. So this shit's getting taken apart right now. So this full moon in Sag is happening in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is all about belief systems, and religions are part of belief systems. And I, in, in my opinion, politics, political parties are religions. So the full moon's happening there in Sagittarius. But then, and also here in Sagittarius, you also have a conjunction of Saturn and Ketu. And so I don't want to get too deep into specifics, but basically when you put Saturn and Ketu together, you basically get kind of like a kind of a mystic, you know, kind of a spiritual teacher that can give you like mantras and prayers and exercises to do that can really change your consciousness and like put you on a higher path. So Saturn and K2 are trying to do this. You know, Saturn is the judge and the enforcer of the cosmos. And, um, you know, he's all about doing things the right way. The really important thing that Saturn does is he enforces our life path on each of us. He keeps us on our life path. So he makes you be real. He makes you be the real you. When you're not the real you, Saturn gives you delays and setbacks, and that's why Saturn is the, the planet of delays and setbacks and, you know, adversity and obstacles. So when you're not being real with yourself, you're not being your real self, Saturn's like, no, I'm not going to give you the good life you want. You know, and a lot of time what we think the good life is, is, is not really the good life, or at least it's not ours. It's not our genuine one. So then K2 is this, this headless body that's totally... Um, it's totally capable, it's totally healthy, it can experience all the world's pleasures, but it has no desires and no agendas because K2 is just about going to the other world, about going to the spirit world. K2 doesn't like life on earth and K2 just wants spirituality. So you've got these two working together. So they're helping us to build a new belief system. And you know, this, this is a good foundation for kind of, a new spiritual consciousness to spring up and a new sort of spiritual movement. Not a religion where you just join the club and then you just, you know, you, you talk the big game and you don't have to really do it, you know. You know, it's not about, it's not going to be this organization you join where people tell you exactly what to do. It's more of a state of mind where you live as your real self. So when you have this full moon in Sagittarius, you've got, K2 and Saturn together in Sagittarius, they're, they're helping us to create our own 
like a new life, like a genuine life. It, it's helping us to, to be our, our real selves and live like that. And then you've got Pluto in there. So Pluto is just is a wrecking ball. It brings change. You know, every Pluto has a long orbit. So every it takes a couple hundred years, you know, like 260 some years to get around the solar system. So it's like a multi-generational event where Pluto comes around and brings certain types of changes. So Pluto's a wrecking ball. So Pluto is just going to be slamming through these belief systems. So it's almost like Saturn and K2 are going to be sort of helping us create the new belief systems and just bringing our attention away from the old ones. And Pluto is just going to destroy them. So a lot of people aren't going to like this. And so these, these belief systems that are getting destroyed are the ones from the age of Pisces. So these old religions, you know, so the three big religions right now, you know, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, they're not going to get any bigger. You know, they've, they've reached their high watermark. They'll always be followers, but they're not going to get any bigger. You know, there's not going to be, you know, a lot of these religions, fantas especially Islam and Christianity, they fantasize about, you know, spreading and, you know, making the whole world followers of their religion. It's not going to happen. Like, they've gotten as big as they're ever going to get. And so, again, you know, our whole political system, you know, especially in the United States here, there's two sides you can pick. And, you know, if you don't want to be part of that, then, you know, you're an outlier. So that's, that's Piscean. That's age of Pisces because you're either good or you're evil. And both sides think they're good and they think the other side's evil. You know, it's like, really, we're, we're the most innovative country in the world. We can only have two, two perspectives. It's like, that's, that's total bullshit. So that's coming down. And a lot of people aren't going to like it. You know, and just lifestyles are going to change too. So a lot of older people aren't going to like this. And, you know, they're going to they're gonna fucking lose their shit, you know, through this year as they see this stuff coming down. But... You know, that's how it is. You know, things don't stay the same forever. So another interesting thing about this conjunction that's going on. So we've got this full moon in Sagittarius, and then you have this Saturn K2 Pluto conjunction also in Sagittarius. Well, right at the full moon, at the time of the full moon, this is all in the eighth house. So the eighth house is all about mysteries and hidden things and underlying issues. Um, you throw conspiracies into that. You know, just everything that's that's hidden and unknown and below the surface. So, you know, to me, to have that full moon there, it's basically about, you know, we're, we're getting a glimpse of all of sort of the... Uh, the underlying issues in ourselves and in the world and you know we're, get, we're getting a glimpse of you know what's really underlying those belief systems and uh, you know it's kind of ugly you know because there, there's a lot of self-righteousness here you know like I said Pisces is very self-righteous and I think you know in this whole two-party us versus them left versus right thing it's it's very self-righteous you know it's pretty ugly honestly and, um, you know, as an American, you know, I look at the last 70 years, you know, we've had this Pax Americana. It's like the Pax Romana back when Roman Empire started, you know, all, again, all age of Pisces. So Pax Romana was the Romans would conquer or, you know, unseat the government of, you know, countries that they thought could be potential threats in the future. So it was total, it's this like doctrine of preemption, you know, just like the invasion of Iraq in 2003. So the United States has been doing this for 70 years, you know. They've, they've usually, they've used mostly dirty wars and covert means, but, you know, there's been invasions too, you know. So countries that could possibly be a threat in the future might look at us cross-eyed, you know, you know, our, our, you know, our military and, you know, our intelligence services are used to go deal with them. But the thing about Pisces too is that Pisces, it's all about haves and have nots. So it's not so much about money, but it's about power. So there can only be a few people in power. So the rest of us are expected to just stay in our place and just be happy about that. 
So whether you pick the left versus the right, or no matter what religion you pick, you're always cheering for a billionaire to win. And you're always going to be in your place. You know, so that's, that's the ugly underlying sort of side of our belief systems here that we don't recognize, or at least we don't recognize them consciously. You know, and the thing is, too, is that, you know, and I look at this, too, just, and just incidentally, we've got Jupiter retrograde in the seventh house during this full moon. Seventh house is all about other people. It's about the other people in our lives. It's in Scorpio, which is all about karma. I think these left versus right politics and really these abusive religions, these oppressive religions that we've had for the last 2,000 years, they work because we can't recognize the abusive behaviors that other people show us in our personal relationships, in our personal lives. So if we can't recognize abuse, abusive behavior in our own lives, and abusive behaviors you know that we do, then we can't recognize it when when our leaders do it, when our political and our religious leaders do it. So it's like, you know, how could really it's like how would we know that we're being mistreated on this larger level if we can't see it in our own personal lives? So, you know, that that that's Pisces right there. It's like it how you feel about being part of the order doesn't matter. And that's why, I mean, that's why alcohol is such a big part of every culture everywhere practically. Um that's why, you know, marijuana is getting legalized is like things, you know, we're, we're coming to the, we're either coming to the end of Pisces or, you know, it just ended recently, but it's energy. How, how, what do you think about the start of the age of, the, of Aquarius? Where, you know, whenever that is exactly, it doesn't really matter because the changeover is happening. So there, there are so many habits that we have to just get us out of our feelings and the way we feel about our lives. You know, so it's like, you know, marijuana is everywhere now and it's getting legalized everywhere. I got no problem with it, but it is a form of self-medication, you know, and then, you know, there, there are all these sort of fads and, you know, and things coming into style that are all about getting away from your feelings. I think like, you know, polyamory's gotten real big. I think that's all about that. It's like, you know, you can't deal with one relationship, you know, and, and really be in it. So you kind of have to, you know, you need variety so you don't have to, you can stay on the surface and you don't have to get deep into things because they're things you don't want to look at. So we have all these things around us, you know, and then just there's so many distractions. There's so many media distractions and, you know, people are stuck in their devices. You know, it's, I think it's all forms of self-medication. I always call the smartphones the cigarettes, you know, because when I was a little kid, People be out in public and they'd have a minute free. They'd light a cigarette. Now they're they're fucking around with their with their iPhones or their droids, you know. So we're at the end of Pisces and it's the last flare of the candle. So it's really the most intense. So people don't. Most people don't want this to go away. They want the status quo to continue and they want they want to be a member of the Democratic or Republican Party that's going to ride the glory and bring us all to glory. And, you know, and, and I've said this before, they're talking these big games about unity, but, you know, what they really mean by unity is that when everyone does things our way, then we'll have unity. You know, and that was Pax Romana, that's Pax Americana. You know, and that's how, you know, that's how really totalitarian regimes get power, is they, they eliminate the opposition, or they shut up the opposition, and you have peace. So... People want to keep this going. So, you know, jumping back to this, this Persian Gulf thing with these two tankers, somebody out there wants to use this as a justification to have another war because the economy's been in trouble for a long time. And when the economy's in trouble, we go to war. It distracts people and it kind of pumps a little money into the economy and, you know, makes all the economic data look better for a little while. So... You know, if you haven't been up on this, you know, a Japanese and a Norwegian tanker were struck by some kind of a weapon. They were burning for a while. And the Pentagon released, you know, this grainy black and white footage of a boat pulling up next to a tanker. Just this very quick image. You can't see the context it's in. You can't see a flag on the boat. You can't see uniforms of the people on there. 
can't see any markings and they're kind of pulling up to the side and they're doing they're pulling something off the hull of the boat so the pentagon has said oh this is proof that the iranians were pulling the mines that they placed on there that didn't go off off of the boat and you know so the donald has run with this and you know and the Secretary of State, and all these people are saying it's indisputable proof. And it's like, well, you, you can't see anything. I can't see the context this was in. Um, you know, and really it's like, you know, the, the news media really didn't have their shit together because everyone has a different opinion about when this happened. You know, and most, most of them are saying it happened in the afternoon. And this black and white footage is from FLIR, so it's a forward-looking infrared radar. It images non-visible light. It's basically heat, you know, the light, the non-visible light that goes with heat. But if it happened at like four or five in the afternoon, why were they using a night vision technology to image this? You know, why was the drone using that? They also have visible light optics. So it's pretty bizarre, you know, and everyone's got a different version. But the funny thing is the, the owners of the tankers, the Japanese and Norwegian owners are like, no, this didn't happen anything like the United States is saying it happened. And, you know, also, you've got the Prime Minister of Japan and a whole diplomatic mission in Japan right now to make a deal with the Iranians to try to calm the tensions down. So why would Iran attack a Japanese tanker while the Prime Minister's there? While the Prime Minister of Japan is in Iran? Like, it's just, it's stupid is, is what it is. It's like, it's very ill thought through. Um, I think what's going on is the Japanese are trying to make a deal with Iran to buy oil and they're cutting American oil companies out of the deal. And so again, you know, these, these big, you know, like these big oil companies, you know, that control all the world's oil, you know, they're, they're sort of part of this Piscean establishment. You know, their executives are part of this Piscean establishment. Um, they want to dominate the control of a resource and a commodity. And so when that gets threatened, you know, they, they want that government to be taken down. So, you know, they, they want to keep this, this Piscean energy going. And, and this whole thing too, you know, with like, you know, America is the sole superpower. That's just like the church was, where the church was like, we are the one path to God. And if you're outside of us, you're going to be fucking sorry. You know, if you try to sidestep us and not be a member of this church, you're a heretic. So there are definitely people who want to keep this old Piscean way going and they're freaking out um, and they're setting booby traps. They see Pisces leaving and you know, this Aquarian sort of way is starting up. And so they're going to set booby, you know, the dark side is going to set booby traps. They don't want to see the world change. So it's, it's pretty wild stuff. So, and you know, People, when you mention this kind of stuff, people call it conspiracy theory and all this stuff. And it's like, well, the real conspiracy in the world is to, you know, make money by any means necessary. Um, so I don't think, I don't think the U.S. military faked the whole thing with the tankers. And I don't think the Iranians did it. Um, I think it, there are plenty of private entities out there with military capabilities. So, and they could, you know, they'll work. They work when they get paid. So they could go. Um, but I think a lot of people are going to turn this thing into about whether you love or you hate the Donald, you know, Donald Trump. Um, but it's way bigger than that, you know, and it's like, he's, he's following his marching orders too. You know what I mean? It's like, no matter who politicians work for, for billionaires, you know, especially presidents and he just works for a different group of billionaires, you know, so that's, that's, that's why he looks like a maverick, but you know, he's, he's playing a role. I mean, he's kind of, he's, you know, I think they told him to be who, be a combination of what he did, like in The Apprentice and, uh, WrestleMania and when Warren Beatty was in Bullworth. I think he, so he's playing characters. He's just, he's being a wild card. He's a reality TV guy. He's not a trained, he's not trained like a news anchor or like a soap opera actor. You know, he's not all smooth and polished like most politicians. So he's just like this reality TV wild card 
who says crazy shit and, you know, he stirs people up, you know, he says, you know, one day he'll say something like, the economy's going to collapse if I'm not president, you know, it's just like it's shit stirring and that, that's what he's there to do. I don't believe he's here to bring back the 1950s and the American good old days. He's serving a role like anyone else, you know, and he could be, repul you know, th there are a hundred people who could take his place, you know, so anyway, so again, old belief systems are, are coming down and we're having to deal with this and what you're seeing in the world right now, you're seeing, you know, both political sides, left and right, you're seeing religions and you're just seeing regular people trying to keep the age of Pisces going the last 2000 years and you know and all of our belief systems come from that time so people don't want things to be different so they're gonna lose their shit they're gonna go fucking crazy and you know it's the way it's gonna be and another interesting thing too you know with this whole tanker incident is that across the zodiac from Sagittarius where Saturn, K2 and Pluto and the moon are you've got the Sun you have Rahu, Mercury and Mars and Gemini so it's what the real Western astrology calls an opposition or Vedic astrology calls an aspect or mutually aspected. So Sagittarius and Gemini with all these planets in them are looking across at each other. So the ones in Gemini, for one, you have the sun and the sun is the ego. You know, it's our, it's our collective ego and it's our individual egos and it's at one degree. So in Vedic astrology, well, in all astrology, signs are 30 degrees wide. So depending on what the degree is, it's kind of like a human life cycle. So like zero degrees is infant and 29 degrees is elderly. So one degree is like a toddler. So the sun's at one degree. So our ego is very juvenile during this full moon. So we can't really put things in perspective properly. You know, you know we're like impulsive, kind of childish, really. And then... Gemini is the house of trade and the house of commerce. So well, it's one of the houses of, you know, trade, commerce, speculation, part of it. So you've got Rahu, Mercury, and Mars all almost on top of each other within two degrees. So Rahu is lower than Mars. So Rahu is influencing Mars. So it's expanding Mars's aggressive, violent, volatile energy. And it also... Rahu can be about, you know, kind of like doing things through illegal means and sort of sneaky kind of covert means. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. So in, in commerce, you know, and oil tanker shipping is part of commerce, you know, you've got, you know, some possible illegal violent activity done. And then Mercury's here too. So, you know, it's, angry communication and deceitful communication. So it's interesting. So thanks for tuning in today. I'll be back in a couple weeks with the July forecast. I'll probably make a video for the eclipse on July 2nd. And um, check my site out. It's thecosmicalchemist.com. You can book a Vedic astrology reading with me. I also do rune readings and I have a couple of Qigong videos for sale for download. So have a good one. I'll talk to you later.